Hi everybody, welcome back to Just Make It. In this video, we're going to be having a closer look at the ESP32 Cam, a compact microcontroller with a lot of cool features. Being part of the ESP32 family, you get all the main features you'd come to expect, for example Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but the main standout feature is the camera. The camera lets you set up this ESP32 like a webcam which you can access remotely. It also lets you capture images onto an SD card which you can then access later on your computer. All these features make the ESP Cam a perfect fit for home automation projects, IoT projects, or if you're just looking for your next microcontroller to have a little play about with. So this particular ESP Cam, which I'll link down below, is comprised of three main parts. Firstly, you have the microcontroller itself, which is where you have all your GPIO pins and where the camera module attaches into. Then you have a programming module that you use to program the ESP Cam, as it doesn't have its own USB connection. And lastly, you have the camera module itself. So to get this set up and ready to upload sketches onto, it's actually really straightforward. Firstly, you attach the ESP cam board onto the programming module. That just slots in nicely. You just have to make sure the pins line up to the female header pins. Then you get the ribbon cable from the camera module and slide it into the jack that's already prepared for you. And then make sure you just set the clasp shut. The last thing you need to do is get your micro SD card and put it into the SD card slot and then this is all ready to get an application uploaded onto it. All that's left is to connect this to your PC via the micro USB attachment on the programming module and then you're good to go. There are a large number of applications available to you so feel free to try out different ones. The one that I found worked really well, I'll drop a link in the description below, is this particular GitHub page. As you can see it's got a lot of features but for our use case the main thing is that it allows you to capture images and store them as JPEG on an SD card and of course it allows you to stream live video. The first thing is to scroll all the way to the top of the page, left click on code and download as zip. Once it's finished downloading, unzip it and then you want to locate the .ino file. Double click on that and you should get the Arduino IDE opening up. What you should find is that in addition to the sketch, you're also getting the additional libraries opening up in additional tabs on the IDE. These are all really necessary, so don't close any tabs, you're just going to upload everything as is. Then you want to go to the drop down menu where you can select your boards, pick the right COM port and then search for AI Thinker ESP32 Cam. The whole upload process takes a few minutes, but essentially what this does is upload the sketch and all the libraries onto the ESP cam. It then makes the ESP cam set up an access point, so it becomes its own little Wi-Fi router, which you can then connect to and use the camera features. You want to go to whichever part you use to look for open Wi-Fi networks, and you should see an access point open up that says something like ESP32 cam. Once you've connected, the particular IP address that the ESP Cam has set up should be printed in the serial monitor. So open up a browser and go onto that. Once you've browsed onto that, you should see the main camera interface appear. And then this is your main hub for accessing the camera and controlling all the different features. And then all that's left to do is scroll all the way up to the top and where it says start stream, click on that and then you should get a feed from the camera through to your computer screen. Right guys, so the interface this application gives you to work with is actually pretty good. It's quite in depth and there's a lot of ways that you can control the different settings on the camera. So for example, here you can control the resolution, the frame rate, quality and even turn the LED on and off. Then going down you can play with motion detection and recording to do with that. Then here you can control the brightness, contrast and a lot of other settings that you can play around with. And lastly you can actually even set up an FTP server so you can access your photos over FTP. And I think that's, that's pretty cool. After I had the camera all up and running, I wanted to make a 3D printed enclosure for it just to give it a complete look. So I headed over to printables and after browsing what was on offer, this is the model that I landed on. I'll leave a link to the model that I used in the description below. Once I was ready, I downloaded the model, imported it into Prusa Slicer and then got it prepared for printing. 
In terms of material choice, for this particular print I decided to use PETG purely because I really like the textured finish you get from a textured plate. And in terms of colour, I went for black because, well, you know, black's always a safe bet. Once everything had finished printing, the assembly was really quite straightforward. You get the two parts, carefully put the ESP cam inside it, the right way around of course, and then snap everything together. This model is designed to hold itself together with friction, so you don't need any adhesives, fixing, anything like that. Just need a little bit of a squeeze, so make sure you give it a tight, firm press, and then otherwise you're good to go. And then you've got access to the camera, the LED, and the USB port. And that brings us to the end of this video everyone. Now that we've got the camera working, really the possibilities are endless. I could use this to monitor my prints remotely if I'm somewhere else in the house or maybe with a bit of extra tinkering even if I'm outside. Or you can use this as a DIY security camera which is more what I had in mind when I made it. I think we're still a little, a little bit away from getting to that point but it's a step in the right direction. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did please consider liking, subscribing and commenting down below on any future projects you want me to have a go at or any improvements on this one, but otherwise I'll see you all in the next video.